homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today I'm feeling a little bit better. Uh, I can uh, raise my arm. I can actually put my hat on with my right hand. I haven't been able to do that in, in months. Uh, so I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, I can raise my arm about 120 degrees front ways and about 110 that way. So I'm working on it. But it's got to where the doctor has taken off the 10 pound weight restriction. Well that means I can get back at some of the things here on the homestead that I've been wanting to do. But one of the things that uh, I'm probably going to need to do is all the wood that I've got piled up over here. You remember I got about 3,000, 3,600 board feet of wood to build a barn with. Well, I'm not able to build that barn yet. But I'm going to need to be able to stack that wood and cover it. Uh, I'm going to have to get it out of the weather. Well, you can go back. We made a set of forks for the tractor out of two by fours. And those do pretty good, but when you try and lift uh, 300 pounds, 350, 400 pounds, they can't hold up to that. So they're great for moving uh, anything under 300 pounds around on the homestead. I haul brush with them and all kinds of stuff. They're, they're absolutely great. But I need a more substantial fork. Well, what I did was I went online and looked at some place called Titan Attachments. This is not a sponsored video. Okay, I'll say that up front. This is not a sponsored video for Titan Attachments. This is just what I decided to buy because I needed to move forward here on the homestead. Now, will I still use these other forks? Well, yeah, they're awful easy to put on and off. And if you're just going to move something that's uh, less than 300 pounds, they're great. But if you're going to move something that's uh, my tractor on the back will lift uh, 1,300 pounds. My tractor itself weighs 1,200 pounds uh, without anything on it, just a plain tractor. Now, when you add the bucket and a rear attachment, my tractor probably weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,300 pounds. So, these forks need to be able to lift I think my bucket itself will lift like 900 pounds. Okay, so they needed to be able to lift 900 pounds. Well, Titan Attachments made a light duty uh, set of bucket forks, clamp on bucket forks, uh, that will lift 1,500 pounds. Well, 1,500 pounds is more than my tractor can lift, so I don't have to worry about those breaking if I need to lift something that weighs five, six, seven hundred pounds, okay? So let's get these open and take a first view of these lightweight Titan implements. Now this is all brand new to me. I don't know anything about these. Now one thing I did was these uh, forks that I have on now, these wooden forks, they tend to squall in and out. Well, when I bought these, I bought them with a uh, connector in the center so that they wouldn't be squalling on me. So, let's uh, get one of these out and see what we're looking at. They are not light. Matter of fact, they're pretty heavy. This is the part that clamps onto the bucket. It all looks pretty heavy duty. Uh, this is how thick the, the bar is. And of course it comes down to a tip here. And I'll show you what it looks like when you get them on the tractor. Let me go ahead and get the other one out. 
Okay, I've got them out of the uh, out of the package. Now, what I'm seeing is a, a fairly heavy duty set of forks. Now, when when it comes, there is a manual. Here it is. It's just a a little bitty thing. Of course, you know, most folks wouldn't even read that little manual, but. You can kind of see what it shows you to do. It's not rocket science. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these forks on. And I'm going to take off my other forks. Now, these are not light. Uh, probably, I would have a hard time carrying both of them at once. Especially now with my arm the way it is. Uh, but I might have a hard time carrying them both at once. If my arm wasn't like this, so but you expect that from a piece of heavy equipment. So, okay, let's get this fork on. So I'm gonna start off by just setting it up here and loosening the clamp. The clamp's got a pretty aggressive thread on it which it needs to have. Now just take it and slide it right here on the bucket and you slide it all the way up. And clamp it on. That seems pretty steady where it's at. Now I'm going to take my other bucket fork off, my wooden one. Of course, those are not hard to take loose. Come on. Well, I, it's going to make a liar out of me. Oh. Generally, you can just pull them and they come right off. But if it don't, just a little encouragement and it comes right out. And I think I'm going to move this bucket clamp over just a little. Well. Okay, I see now I'm probably going to have to carry me a little bar around. There we go. Now, let's put the other one on. Now, these come, they've got a little rubber piece that goes right here, and it looks like there's something that might go in here. I don't know. Uh, could be that you could attach your sway bar there, but we'll look at the, at the sway bar here in just a second. But this, however it is, it keeps water from getting down in here. I'm sure that won't last long on my homestead. But, you know, it's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this. And then remove the, the uh, wooden bucket for it. And that's the way the wooden bucket forks ought to come out. One thing I do notice, the way these are made is you can't put them out all the way to the end of your bucket. The farthest you can go out, of course with my wooden forks, I can go all the way out to the edge of the bucket. But with these, 
I am not going to be able to do that. The reason being is that if you look right here, this has to clear. Okay, so that won't clear right there, so that's about as close in as I can put them. Those seem to be pretty stout. You know, sit an old fat guy down here. Those seem to be pretty stout. Now, how long are they? I never checked to see how long they were. There's 36 inches. They're about 45 inches from here to the tip. So that's a pretty good size. Uh, that's about as wide as any pallet. So let's take a look at the anti-sway. Okay, here's our anti-sway control bar. Here it is. It's real straightforward. Uh, it looks like things will get in the way with it. Now it comes with these bolts in it. These are for fastening on. There's a bolt in this end, a bolt in this end, and one here on the top to adjust the slide in and out. These were torqued down something terrible when I when I got them. But in looking at this, they just go on the end. See if it's long enough. Okay, they just go on the end. Of course, I'm in the way here, but I wanted to show you how they go on. Then you tighten up there, tighten up here. Now the bolt, like everything in the United States anymore, is uh, metric. It's 17 millimeters, but if those of you who work on stuff all the time, you know that you can use an 11 16 on a 17 millimeter bolt. So you can use the 11 16 You can also use a uh, use a uh, crescent wrench. Now I don't know how much wider this will go. My bucket's four feet. Uh, I don't know how far that is back in there still. We're going to look at it here in just a second and decide. Now it also comes for an alternative to this bolt. And the alternative is this screw-in bolt with a handle on it. But knowing me and knowing the way things are, this wouldn't last a day. I'm sure it's probably supposed to go in the other direction. I haven't looked the, at the directions. I'm sure it's probably supposed to point the other direction. But I'll break this the first time I use it on anything. So I know that there's absolutely no reason to put that on. And another reason there's absolutely no reason is because these bolts on the ends, they require a wrench. So if you got to have a wrench anyway, it's just as well as to have a wrench for this bolt too. And uh, of course this slides all the way back to the back, but you can put it anywhere on them to help keep down it swaying back and forth. Now I'm going to take this back off and then we'll see how far this will open up. Of course I've got my buckets, my bucket set. I could probably get another two inches. This, uh, this fork right here is not set all the way over. I could probably get another two inches on the, on the thing. So let's see if there's two inches left in here. Now, let's see how uh, wide it'll open. Now 
that's about it right there. So I could get another two inches. Well, that's not. I think it has to go to there. So I'm really as wide as it's going to go in reality. So let's see how wide that is. So the maximum width on this sway bar is about 34 and 3 quarter inches. So let's say 35 inches is the maximum width between these if you're going to use the sway bar. Now I don't anticipate using that sway bar all the time. Uh, my other ones do pretty good and when these are clamped up close I don't think they're going to sway a lot but you know with 800 pounds on there they might sway quite a bit so you got to think about those kinds of things. Okay, that's uh, my box opening of uh, the Titan Equipment pallet forks, light duty pallet forks. They do 1,500 pounds. So if you like this kind of stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homestead stuff every week, sometimes once, sometimes five videos. just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. If you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, I need to get at these uh, Titan equipment forks. But now, if you can't afford these, I think they cost me $174. That's shipping and all. If you can't afford these, uh, you can always make those $3 pallet forks. I'll put the link to it right over here. Okay?